Okay, so, happy new year over to the fellas. It is indeed January 1st, meaning that firstly, yes, the very emotionally impactful year that was 2020 is finally over. But because it is now January 1st, it means that YouTube ad rates are at its all-time low, meaning that I'm going to be sitting over here thinking about whether or not I should make more videos because, you know, that's the process. But today we're talking about a few things that I saw that were interesting, in my opinion, and that were all kind of in the same realm. So I'm just trying to throw all this stuff here together and see what sticks. Today we're talking about some players that are in the NHL that might be out for an extended amount of time or who have already confirmed that, you know, they're either injured or in a position where they may be injured to start the year. Whatever, whatever, whatever. Firstly, we're starting things off with New Jersey Devils center Nico Hischier, first overall pick in the 2017 NHL injury draft. He said earlier this week that his injury happened in early December and that he's feeling a lot better already. He's week to week and he says he is trying to stay positive and plans what to do what he can with the staff to be ready for game one. Now, it was indeed labeled as a leg injury, which is going to cause him to lose the start of the season. He suffered a key injury training in Switzerland in early December. The key is his year did not have surgery. So the Devils don't consider this long term and it's a matter of days and or weeks. Now, for a New Jersey Devils team that literally got the first overall pick in 2019 and who were one of the lottery teams in this year's draft, they probably do want to improve a little bit considering the fact they do have a Jack Hughes, who has indeed gained some muscle mass and is a lot more physically mature. And of course, they still have Nico Hischier, who has more to prove year after year. But this could be quite impactful depending on how long it is Hischier is out for. But moving on to our next story, we do have ourselves another big name in this Eastern Metro division-ish group of teams, you have Jack Eichel. We had ourselves word earlier yesterday that Jack Eichel is out with a day-to-day -day upper body injury. Now, the Sabres PR did say that it was another injury sustained in training with Jack Eichel, and that it is day-to-day, -day, so this could literally change like tomorrow, depending on how Eichel feels, but he's in a position where it's a little bit more just pretty much as a precaution as to why they're putting him off and saying that he's day-to-day. Ralph Kruger expects Eichel to be back on the ice in the next couple of days as well, as well as Linus Allmark, who is also on this team. So that's kind of our update on Eichel. Obviously, Eichel's a lot more of an important player to the Sabres than his year is to the Devils. That's just kind of how it is. But with Jack Eichel, obviously being in a day-to-day -day situation is a lot better than his year's week-to-week -week situation. Just imagine, though, what the worst-case scenario could be for this kind of thing. Imagine if it's Jack Eichel, and instead of being day-to-day, -day, it eventually evolves into a week-to-week -week thing or whatever. Let's say he really hurts himself, and all of a sudden the Sabres don't have Eichel to start off the year. All that front-loading you did for... Taylor Hall and Cody Eakin and all these other guys you brought in, Eric Stahl too. It's going to be all for naught. You guys are not going anywhere without Jack Eichel. But of course, that's just me and my pessimistic brain trying to torture those Buffalo Sabres fans who do watch this YouTube channel. But finally, let's go over on to torturing my own team, Vancouver. Let's go over Michael Furlan because earlier this week, we had word that Michael Furlan will not be in Vancouver for the start of the Canucks training camp. His agent Jason Davidson said Mike is at home trying to work things through. His health is the utmost importance. We will continue to work with the Canucks in what is best for Mike. And a lot of people immediately after seeing this tweet kind of have the same response, especially those for the Vancouver Canucks fan base. Yeah, Michael Furland, please, buddy, just wrap it up. Please. The Vancouver Canucks are in a position where they are indeed over the salary cap. And a move like this, where you have a Michael Furlan and you send him to the LTIR, most likely will free the Canucks of those issues. But of course, there are other options to explore. There always are with these kinds of things. Do you want to trade away a guy like a Sutter or whatever? You want to trade away somebody who is making significant money? Send somebody to Utica, the farm team, or the taxi squad, or whatever? Obviously, there are more than enough ways to go about this and actually fix your cap. But the Michael Furlan LTIR idea is the one that's been probably the most prevalent amongst Canucks fans. And now that we have this update that he's not going to come to practice to start things off, and that he most likely will be rehabbing in other ways... Yeah, there's just a bigger sentiment from Canucks fans that says, please, Michael Furlan, just hang him up. This is a guy who, honestly, if he panned out, if Michael Furlan actually came over here and played the game that we thought he was going to be able to play, 
I would not have been surprised if the Canucks squeaked in, I don't know, another extra goal or two past Vegas, or if they ended up not scoring as many against Vancouver. Because Michael Furlan was a very effective hockey player when he was in the lineup. It's just when he started getting the concussions, man, it was really slowing him down, and you can see the physicality start to dwindle a little bit off, and he tried to make a point in the postseason by fighting and showing that he's good to go, but it wasn't really all that great because eventually he did get sidelined again, and it was like, come on, man, please. Let's just give ourselves some rest here. So, talk to me in the comments what you think about Nico Hishier, Jack Eichel, and Michael Furlan about all this stuff. I hope you enjoyed this video. Our show is 99. Happy New Year, by the way. It is indeed 2021. And... Bye.